and it says we're live. Means we're live. Welcome in everybody. It is Sunday. It is May the 16th, I think it is. Let's double check. It is, um, yeah, it's May 16. And this is the video of the week for the topic of the week for the week of May 16. It is Sunday night. I'm getting this video recorded Sunday night. I've got a busy week. I got a busy Monday. That's tomorrow. By recording this video tonight, obviously, if you're watching live, you have the opportunity to check it out live right here. I'm so happy to have you. I see we've got some people showing up. That is great. And if you're watching this video later on replay, well, isn't that the beauty of replay as it works here with YouTube and the YouTube studio? So good stuff all the way around. May is Mental Health Awareness Month. And so for the month of May and for this week, the topic of the week is looking out for or supporting your mental health behind your haircutting chair. Kind of an interesting topic. I think an opportunity for us to talk about really several aspects of this as it relates to our work and what we do to just look out for ourselves every single day. But before we go there, we go here. You know we do the reading for $100,000 haircutter at the top of the week, every week as part of the class. So let's find May 16. May 16, day 136 of the year with 229 days remaining in the year. Apply the rule of fifths when using blending shears to reduce bulk. Technical cutting tip we have for you this time out, and it is the rule of fifths. And that is the idea that when we are using blending scissors, and if you need a blending scissors, in stock, the Clipper Guy Classic Barber Blender is in stock online at ivanzoot.com. Japanese 440 Stainless, a beautiful tool I have custom made and imported for me, for my community. But when we use a blending scissors, we have what we call the rule of fifths. And that is the idea that anytime we're using the blending scissors, whether it is to, and this specifically is for bulk reduction. When we're using the blending scissors to blend, it's an end tapering issue. We're always using the scissors out on the ends of the hair in what would be the fifth, fifth of the hair shaft, meaning take the hair shaft, however long it is. Imagine it's broken up into five equal parts, starting at the scalp, moving outward. For blending, we work in the fifth, fifth of the hair shaft. Bulk reduction, the other thing for which we use blending scissors, calls for using our blending scissors only when reducing bulk in the third, fourth, and fifth, fifth of the hair strand. So moving outward from the scalp, one and two, stay away from there, three, four, and five, safe zone. The reason for this is as follows. Number one, if we get in too close to the scalp, we're going to create little pieces that are going to porcupine. They're going to stick up, out, and through that hair design or shape. That's a no-no, number one. And number two, if we get too close to the scalp, there's nothing left. Mid-strand to ends. On thinner and finer hair, we only work in four and five out near the ends to create movement and to create activation and texture. There is no bulk. If we're reducing bulk, it's only on medium to thick and heavy hair and only in three, four, and five. Stay away from the base because you get poof. Those little pieces will build support and you'll have more hair when the whole point of trying to use blending scissors to reduce bulk was to collapse the shape to have less hair. So the $100,000 hair cutter tip of the day is a technical cutting tip. You know they're all in here. Sales, marketing, advertising, promotion, business building, hiring, training, and technical cutting in the book. If you want all the tips, you can buy the book ivanzoot.com or Amazon, or you can join the online community at patreon.com slash ivanzoot. The link is in the description for this video after I get to editing the description. If you're watching on replay, it'll already be there uh, so that you can click and join that community. Or of course you can buy the book straight up. So that's our $100,000 haircutter tip of the day from the book. 
Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for joining me here for the video of the week on the topic of the week. You know the housekeeping stuff. Like the video, comment on the video, turn on your notifications, subscribe to the channel, and share the video with somebody in the beauty and barber business who could benefit from it. And especially this week when we talk about Mental Health Awareness Month and being aware of issues as they relate to our own mental health behind the chair. You know, mental health is a very serious topic. And I'm glad it has a month, the month of May, in which we focus on it, not just in the beauty and barber business, but of course, for our purposes, especially within the beauty and barber business. Sometimes we joke around about the idea that as a barber or cosmetologist, we are in some way a therapist to our clients. And I know we joke about it. And in all seriousness, it's no joking matter in two ways. Number one, I think it's no joking matter because at the end of the day, we are not educated, we are not credentialed, and we are not really qualified to be therapists in a formal sense. So I think the notion of thinking we are or espousing that we are, that's a dangerous game. Let's just not do that. However, the other side of it is we can be there. We can be there to listen. We can be there to provide support. Support doesn't necessarily come in the form of advice, because that's not really what a good mental health professional does. They're not there to provide advice. They're there to provide guidance and there to provide insight and there to provide support, uh, helping someone through mental health related issues. So let's take it seriously that it's a subject we need to be aware of. For ourselves and our clients, let's understand our role and where we do and don't fit into that equation. And let's respect the mental health professionals whose job it is to really professionally look at supporting people and their mental health. I think the single most important thing we can do when it comes to mental health as it relates to our clients is be a resource. I think having telephone numbers, having business cards, being able to provide someone, we can be really good at identifying need, identifying a situation in which someone might need the intervention of a mental health professional for a variety of reasons and a variety of life circumstances and, and everybody's got their own unique situation. I think we can spot those situations well and maybe a thoughtful word, a kind suggestion and slipping somebody discreetly a business card, I think that can be powerful. I also like the fact that many times in the beauty and barber industry, we use the bathroom as a place to communicate resources as they relate to mental health. Um, I know you've all seen flyers or posters on a mirror in a public or quasi-public bathroom or a sign on the back, even more private, on the back of a stall door with tear-off numbers for uh, whether they are substance abuse programs or domestic violence programming or other mental health services and resources that individuals might need. I think those are all really great ways to use our position and our role in the public sphere uh, to be valuable to people as it relates to being supportive of people as it relates to issues of mental health. So that's how it relates to clients. But what I really want to talk about today is you. I want to really talk about us. I want to talk about service providers. And I want to offer some tips, seven of them, six of which I'll go into detail, one of which is going to be the topic of the week for next week. We'll get there next week. But six quick tips for guardianing, I made that word up, our mental health as service providers behind the chair. Six quick hits here. Number one, block your lunch. Block out a lunch break very early on, weeks before the week that it's happening. Block it out, protect it, secure it, and take that lunch. 30 minutes at least. And this is time that you get away from the service environment. Ideally, you get out of the building. Fresh air, sunshine. If the climate allows you to get outdoors, outdoors away from your customers, away from your coworkers, away from the business environment in which we have to do and be and give to these people. Nutrition, oxygen, hydration, social contact, 
Call your spouse, text your friend, have a conversation with somebody having nothing to do with our industry. Get out of the building, have a good lunch. Because when you come back, you'll be more valuable to yourself and to everyone else that you serve. Lunch is so very important. 30 minutes every single day. Don't ever, ever sell your lunch to someone. And I don't mean the bag. I mean the time. And that brings us to number two on the list. Learn how to say no. Hey, you're fully booked, but they blocked the lunch for you. Can you cut my hair during your lunch? No, no. Hey, you're working nine to five. I can't make it in. Can you come in early at 830 for me? No. Hey, you're working nine to five. They said you're full. Can you stay late and cut me at five? No, no. Hey, you're fully booked. Can I bring my sister and you'll cut her hair too? No. And that brings me to number three. Never squeeze. Never squeeze in an appointment. Learn how to say no and never squeeze. Lock your lunch. Learn how to say no, never squeeze. That's our first three. You know why you don't squeeze? When we squeeze an appointment, we think we're doing somebody a solid. When we squeeze someone in, we think we're helping them out. We're doing good. And the truth of the matter is, when we squeeze in a customer, we are actually damaging four people. We are hurting four people when we squeeze a customer. Think about it. When you agree to squeeze someone in, the client currently in your chair gets the rush job. They get hustled out. Maybe you forget to retail, rebook, ask for requests. Uh, maybe you don't ring them up and send them off the way you want to. You're not being your best you with the client that gets rushed out so you can squeeze somebody. That's person number one. The current client gets abused. Person number two is the person you're squeezing. You think you're doing them a favor, but what happens? You hustle them through. Got to get you in. Got to get you out. Got other people. Boom, boom, boom. And you're not delivering the kind of service you want to deliver. To deliver. You're not creating the kind of experience you know you should be creating. So the person, the second person that is disadvantaged by squeezing is the person that you squeeze. Who's number three? Well, that would be the next client, the client coming after the squeeze, who you are now late for. That client had an appointment. They made the appointment. They kept the appointment. They showed up on time. And now you're running late. So by thinking you were helping one person by squeezing them, you actually damaged the earlier one, the one you squeezed, and the next one, who now you're late for. You're getting to them ragged, stressed, really not in the position to serve them as best you can and in the manner in which you wish to. And who is person number four that is disadvantaged when you attempt to squeeze a customer? Well, of course, that would be you. Now you're running behind. Now you're anxious. Now you're uptight. Now you're stressed. Now you're having trouble getting through it all. And you did this to you. Don't do this to you. Don't ever squeeze anybody. Top three tips, block your lunch, learn how to say no, never squeeze. Let's get on to four, five, and six. Number four, specialize. Our industry is big, our industry is broad, and our industry is vast. And there are so many things we can do behind the chair as a beauty and barber professional. I'm gonna suggest that you do what you love. I'm gonna suggest that you don't do what you don't enjoy. It's kind of part of saying no. Figure out what really rocks you, Figure out what really drives you, what really motivates you, what really brings you joy, and do that. Because when you are doing the things you most enjoy, you're the best you've ever been. When you're doing the things you most enjoy, you're in your flow, your state of flow, you're in the zone, you're cranking it, you're having a great time. You will enjoy your job, and therefore you will enjoy your life, and you will enjoy the people you work with, and the people you live with, and the people around you that much more when you are that much happier. And the secret to being happy is doing what you love and not doing what you don't love. Perms, you don't have to do them. Just say no. I didn't like to perm. I had one member who did all my perming. If a client of mine needed a perm, she permed them. I'll cut them. Fine. Color, you don't like color. You don't want to do color. Don't do color. Pedicures, manicures, massage, waxing, Whatever you don't want to do, don't do. But whatever you really want to do, double down on that. Become a specialist. Become an expert. And become the happiest you've ever, ever been. And by the way, 
Specialists get to, number five, specialists get to charge more. You want to look after your mental health? Charge more money. Raise your prices. You know, we're coming up on June, and June is the month in which we talk about July. July 1, raise your haircut prices day in the USA. All the month of June, we'll be talking every day about price increases. But what I want to talk about right here is the idea that if you want to be happier, if you want to, now money is not the secret to happiness, but it is easier to be happier with more money. You want to be a little bit happier with every haircut that you do? You want to enjoy every single day behind the chair a little bit more? Charge a little bit more money. You know what? If you pay me $10 to cut your hair, I'm going to be happy. If you pay me $20 to cut your hair, I'm going to be thrilled. If you pay me $30 to cut your hair, I'm going to be delighted. If you pay me $40 to cut your hair, I'm going to be simply overjoyed. See how it works? The more money you charge, generally speaking, the happier you will be with the same basic piece of work. It's really easy to be happy in the beauty and barber industry. It's easier to be happier when the prices are higher. Number four, specialize. Number five, charge more money. And number six, get some exercise. Just like our lunch was so important for food, nutrition, fresh air, sunshine, and a break, exercise is a key component of good mental health. Get your blood pumping, get your heart going, get your lungs breathing, get you perspire a little bit, get your endorphins flowing. There's all kinds of positive physiological and positive psychological benefits to just a little bit of exercise. I'm a certified personal fitness trainer and I'm certified by the American Council on Exercise. And the American Council on Exercise recommends 30 minutes, five times a week of elevated heart rate cardiovascular exercise to maintain optimum cardiovascular conditioning. 30 minutes, five times a week. That is, what is that? Five times three is uh, 50, 150 minutes a week of elevated heart rate cardiovascular exercise. And you don't have to be sprinting marathons. Go for a walk, ride a bike. Ride a stationary bike at the gym. Go on a hike. Pick up some light weights and move them around. There's so many different ways to exercise. So many different ways to get that fitness in. And 30 minutes a day, five days a week. Maybe two of the days on the weekends are days that you do work out because you've got some hectic days during the week. Make the time. Find the time. Make it a priority. So our big six were block your lunch, take your lunch, learn how to say no and never squeeze. And we tied those together. And our next three were specialize, charge more money and get some exercise. These are my six key tips for maintaining your mental health behind the chair because it is Mental Health Awareness Month here in May. Tip number seven is when and where it is appropriate you need to fire a client. The time comes when we need to fire a client. And that's the topic of the week for next week. Next week in this video and in the podcast, podcast is recorded on Friday. It's released on Sunday and it's featured on Wednesday. But come Sunday, the podcast is out there. Monday is this video. I'm recording it Sunday. It goes live and distributed tomorrow, but you're seeing it now or on replay. Monday is video. Tuesday is text blog on the ivanzoot.com website. I publish the text blog on Tuesday. So we focus on the topic of the week. Friday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We talk about it a lot. Next week, how to properly, professionally, with class, when appropriate, fire a client. Because the customer's always right, isn't right. And not all business is good business. And I think we know that we know when that is the case. Putting a fence around your head, protecting your personal space and your mental health is so important in the beauty and barber industry. I'm so glad to have had the opportunity to talk about it this week. Comment on the video. Let's talk about this. 
Like the video if you like the video. Subscribe to the channel. Never miss a video. And of course, turn on your notifications so you know when I'm going to go live. And also, take the URL and share this video with someone who you think can benefit from this information about mental health right now during May, during Mental Health Awareness Month. I'm Ivan Zoo. This is my YouTube channel and my topic of the week video for the week of May 16, 2021. Thank you so very much for being here. I look forward to seeing you here, seeing you on the road at a show or an event. I've got June events, July events, and a whole bunch of events later this year. We're kind of getting back to things. And I'm looking forward to seeing you at a live event. And I'm looking forward to seeing you right here again on YouTube another time. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for watching and have a great day.